Hello and welcome to day six of our ASU LEGO Challenge Camp. Today we are going to be making a sail car, wind racer, some, some name like that. Basically a LEGO vehicle that will be propelled by uh, the force of blowing wind. So we're going to create a sail for it. So that's our mission today is to create a LEGO vehicle that can be powered using wind or blowing air. Um, we're going to start by building this basic model and then you guys can use the engineering design process to modify and create a better version of it. Uh, in this activity you might need a couple extra uh, materials from your house like a piece of paper or you could try using some kind of fabric if you wanted. It doesn't have to necessarily be paper, you could try different materials to see what works. Measuring tape if you want to measure distance for distance traveled. Um, scissors to cut the paper, uh, ruler if you kind of want to measure out the size of your sail. If you have uh, a fan um, or some kind of source of wind, um, you know, like a, a leaf blower might be a little too powerful. But if you, if you have something that blows air, hair dryer would work too. Um, that would be nice because that would give you a consistent source of wind, uh, but just blowing on it will work um, as well. And then, of course, you can always use your extra Legos that you have there at home. So what is a uh, sail wind powered car, a sail car? So there's, a, there's actually a variety of different ways to harness wind energy, um, but they're, they're all using sort of the same mechanism. They are using the already present force of wind moving from one place to another. And so, you know, kind of capturing that that force kind of like uh, you know you use a kite and a kite captures the wind if there's no wind the kite doesn't move same thing with the sailboat <laughs> if there's no wind the sailboat doesn't move so you know wind wind cars are great because they don't use any sort of gasoline um, any kind of fuel they're very eco-friendly but they do require a constant source of wind in order to accelerate and maintain forward movement uh, it does need to be light, so we do need to take materials into account. If they're too heavy, um, then, then the force of the wind might not be powerful enough to overcome uh, the friction created by the mass of your vehicle. So lots of benefits. You guys can read a lot more about this. You can read about different uh, wind-powered vehicles. Um, this is a really awesome car, which sort of combined as, you know, wind power but they're actually using like a kite like a like a wind surfer and so this is just kind of like a different version of a wind car some have sails mounted to them or some way to capture the wind this one just has a sail out in front and then you're kind of steering with the wind uh, this was a really interesting when I was kind of digging deep into wind powered vehicles one of my favorite youtubers Veritaserum has this interesting design where it's actually traveling downwind and it seems to be going faster than the speed of the wind that's propelling it. Pretty interesting. Um, if, if you're into kind of like a scientific YouTube video, I recommend checking it out. It's pretty interesting. And speaking of interesting, one more crazy way to harness wind is using what's called the Magnus effect or Magnus force. And that's <clears throat> sort of like uh, an airplane wing splits air uh, over the wing and creates a pressure difference which causes lift. The Magnus effect is when you have a rotating object, uh, it splits a different amount of air over and under the object or around the object depending on the shape and that actually causes some forward movement. It causes some lift. And so there's actually sailboats that have these giant cylinders that rotate, creating the Magnus effect. It's amazing. It's so cool that they've been able to harness this. If you want to try something at home using the Magnus effect, uh, Bruce Yaney is a fantastic science teacher and he's got some really fun uh, science lab kind of homemade science stuff and one of these is he creates uh, kind of a flyer using some plastic cups uh, and harnesses the Magnus effect to, to create lift. It's pretty interesting uh, and super fun to make these. So as always we're using our engineering design process mostly in the 
developing prototypes and testing, and then eventually communicating our results. All right, so step one is gonna to be to build the sail car. Uh, I recommend building this basic chassis, uh, but of, again, you guys can modify and redesign however you want. But I recommend starting with this design, testing it, and then you can compare any future modifications to this design. All right, if you need help building it, uh, sorry, building instructions are here. If you need help, you can watch my uh, Lego sail car building tutorial here. Then we're going to attach the sail. There's some step-by-step -step directions for you and a YouTube video here if you need help uh, making the sail and attaching it. And then test your sail designs. So what you wanna do is test and see how far uh, the different sails go. So keep the same chassis and change out some sails. And then when you find uh, a sail design, so whether it's a rectangle or a triangle, or maybe um, you'll figure out a different shape to make the sail out of. Once you kind of find uh, the sail that goes the furthest, then I, then I would recommend starting to redesign the actual chassis of the wind racer. Uh, when I'm testing mine, I like to do it on a flat surface. Um, obviously, like the little grooves in the tile aren't great, but this is better than trying this on carpet. I also used a portable fan to have a consistent wind source. So if you have some kind of fan or hair dryer or some way to create a consistent amount of wind each time, uh, the more consistent the wind is, uh, the better the more consistent your test results and the more reliable your test results will be. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, set up your test, try out the different sales, see how far they go, record the results, make some hypotheses. And uh, if you wanna watch my example, uh, I've got a YouTube video of me uh, testing my sale cars and showing you just kind of an example of how you could test it at home. And then modify and test. So our goal, remember, is to create the best sale car possible. So what else could you do to make a better sail car? Could you, you know, change the length or the width or the tires? Could you change the fabric that the sail is made out of? You know, what if you use, um, like cut out a plastic bag rather than using, using a sheet of paper or some fabric or aluminum foil? You know, are there additional Legos that you could add? Could you make a second sail to the car? So. Lots of possibilities for modifying, and I'm sure you guys will come up with some creative ways to modify your sail car. And of course, as always, please share your discoveries. Take pictures, take videos. We really want to see what you've been able to accomplish. So I look forward to seeing your sail cars and the unique designs that you come up with. All right, have fun.